How do you hope the war in Ukraine ends? With a settlement, with a reasonable settlement. And you know what a reasonable settlement is, which is um, a settlement, you know, where both sides feel like they're giving a little, but can live with it. And I, I mean, I was really struck in my conversation with Putin by how he basically refused to criticize Joe Biden and to criticize NATO. And it is, I will just be honest, as an American, it would be a little weird to be like pissing on Joe Biden with a foreign leader, any foreign leader, even though I don't think Joe Biden is a real person or really president. I mean, the whole thing is ridiculous, but still he is the American president technically. And I don't want to beat up on the American president with a foreigner. Just don't. Maybe I'm old fashioned. So that's how I feel. So I didn't push it, but I thought it was really interesting. And because of course, Putin knows my views on Joe Biden. He knew I applied to the CIA. So they've done some done some digging on me and um but he didn't mention it and he didn't attack nato and the reason is i know for a fact because he wants a settlement and he wants a settlement not because russia is about to collapse despite the lying of our media that's just not true and no one is even saying it anymore because it's so dumb he wants to because it's just it's just bad to have a war and it changes the world in ways you can't predict people die everything about it is sad and if you can avoid it you should so i would like to see a settlement where look the thing that Russia wants, and I think probably has a right to, is not to have NATO missiles on this border. Like, I don't know why we would do that. I don't know what we get out of it. Um, I, I just don't even understand it. I don't understand the purpose of NATO. I don't think NATO is good for the United States. I think it's an attack on our sovereignty. I would pull out of NATO immediately if I were the US president, because I don't think it helps the US. I know a lot of people are getting their bread buttered by NATO, um, but I, Anyway, that's my view as an American. As a, if I'm a Russian or a Ukrainian, let's just, let's just be sovereign countries now. We're not run by the U.S. State Department. We're just our own countries. Like that's I believe in sovereignty. Okay, so that's my view. And I also want to say one thing about Zelensky. I I attacked him before because I was so offended by his cavalier talk about nuclear exchange because it would kill my family. So I'm really offended by that. Anyone who talks that way, I'm offended by. But I do feel for Zelensky. I do. He didn't, he didn't run for president to have this happen. I think Zelensky's been completely misused by the State Department, by Toria Newland, by our Secretary of State, by the policymakers in the US who've used Ukraine as a vessel for their ambitions, their geopolitical ambitions, but also the many American businesses who've used Ukraine as a way to fleece the American taxpayer. And then by just independent ghouls like Boris Johnson are hoping to get rich from interviews on it. Like the whole thing, Zelensky is at the center of this. He's not driving history. NATO and the United States is driving history. Putin is driving history. There's this guy, Zelensky. So, you know, I, I do feel for him and I think he's in a perilous place. Do you think uh, Zelensky is a hero for staying in Kiev? Because I do. To me, you can criticize a lot of things. You should call out things that are well, obviously I, positive. I, I just tried to a second ago. I don't I don't know um, the extent that he is in Kiev. He seems to be in the United States an awful lot, like way too much. You can do a satellite <laughs> I mean, interview. You don't have to speak to my Congress. You're not an American. Please leave. Yeah. That's my opinion. But um, <laughs> you got many zingers, Tucker. No, no, no. It's just heartfelt. It's just bubbling up from the wellspring that never turns off. Um, but I would say this about Zelensky. Yeah, to the extent he's in Ukraine, good man. You know, George W. Bush fled Washington on 9-11. I lived there with three kids and he ran away to some Air Force base in South Dakota. Yeah. And I thought that was cowardly and I said so at the time. And I, man, was I attacked for saying that. And I wrote a column about it in New York Magazine where I then had a column, hard to believe. And, uh, but I felt that, I felt that. Like that's, I think the prerequisites of leadership are really basic. The first is caring about the people you lead. That's number one. You know, a deep, in the way a father cares for his children or an officer cares for his troops, a president should care for his people. And, and that leads inexorably to the next requirement, which is bravery, physical courage. Mm. And I believe in that. Uh, and I'm not like some tough guy, but I just think it's obvious if you're in charge, you, you know, I'm at my house and I feel like someone broke in. I'm not gonna say to my wife, hey baby, go, go deal with the home inv invasion. I'm gonna deal with it because I'm dad, okay? So if you're the president of a country and your capital city is attacked as ours was at the Pentagon and you run away, when the Secret Service told me to, bitch, are you in charge? Like, who's daddy here? The Secret Service? Do, do you know what I mean? I well, found that totally contemptible. And I said so. And man, did I get a lecture, not just from Republicans, but from Democrats. Oh, you don't know. Put yourself in that position. I was like, okay, 
I don't know what I would do under that kind of stress, enormous stress. I get it. I know one thing I wouldn't do is run away because you can't do that. And if you're not willing to die for your country, then you shouldn't be leading it. So yes, to the extent, if, if Zelensky really is in Ukraine most of the time, amen. Well, hold on a second. Let's clarify. It's not about whether he's in Ukraine most of the time or not. Well, I thought but, that was the whole premise of the- No, 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 no. At the, <laughs> at the beginning of the war, when the tank, when Kiev, when a lot of people thought that the second biggest military in the world is pointing its guns at Kiev, is gonna be taken. And a man, a leader who stays in that city and says, fuck it. When everybody around him says flee, says everybody around him believes the city will be taken or at least destroyed, you know, leveled, artillery, bombs, all of this, he chooses to stay. You know a lot of leaders. How many leaders would choose to stay? Well, the leader of Afghanistan, the U.S.-backed leader, when the Taliban came, got in a U.S. plane with U.S. dollars and and ran away and, and of of course, is living on those dollars now. So yeah, there's a lot of cowardly behavior. Good for him. I, um, I mean, I guess I'm looking at it slightly differently, which is what's the op what's the option? You're the leader of the country. You can't leave. Like Stalin never left Moscow during the war. It was surrounded by the Germans, as you know, um, for a year, and he didn't leave. And when I was in Russia, they're like well, Stalin never left. It's like yeah, he's the leader of the country. You can't. I mean, like that's just table stakes, of course. I would say. But you raise an interesting by implication question, which is, you know, what about Kiev? Like, you think the Russians couldn't level Kiev? Of course, obviously they could. Why haven't they? They could, but they haven't. Well, there's there's military answers to that, which is urban warfare is extremely difficult. Do you think that Putin wants to take Kiev? No, I do think he expected Zelensky to flee and and yeah, somebody that, else to come into power. I, yeah, that may be totally, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think, I have no idea what Putin was thinking um, when he did that about Zelensky. I didn't ask him. But it's a mistake to imagine this is a contest between Putin and Zelensky. This is Putin versus the US State Department. I mean, Zelensky, that, and that's why I said I felt sorry for him. I mean, as I said, we're literally paying the pensions of Ukrainian bureaucrats. So there is no Ukrainian government independent of the US government. And, you know, maybe you're for that, maybe you're against it, but you can't endorse that in the same sentence that you use the term democracy, because that's not a democracy, right? Obviously. Well, that's why it's interesting that he didn't really bring up NATO extensively. He wants a settlement. He wants a settlement and he doesn't want to fight with them rhetorically. And he just wants to get this done. And he made a bunch of offers um, at the peace deal and you know, we wouldn't even know this happened if the Israelis hadn't told us, and I'm so grateful that they did, um, that Johnson was dispatched by the State Department to stop it. And it's like, I, I mean, I think Boris Johnson is a husk of a man, but imagine if you were Boris Johnson and you, you know, you spend your whole life with Ukraine flag pen, I'm for Ukraine, and then all those kids died because of what you did. And the lines haven't really moved. It hasn't been a victory for Ukraine. It's not going to be a victory for Ukraine. It's like, how do you, how do you feel about yourself if you did that? I mean, I've done a lot of shitty things in my life. I feel bad about them, but I've never extended a war for no reason. Like that's a pretty grave sin in my opinion, you know? Yes, that was a failure, but it doesn't mean you can't have a success over and over and over, keep having uh, negotiations between leaders. Well, we're not, the US government is not allowing negotiations. And so that for me is the most upsetting part. It's like in the end, what Russia does, I'm not implicated in that. What Ukraine does, I'm not implicated in that. I'm not Russian or Ukrainian. I'm an American who grew up really believing in my country. I'm supporting my country through my tax dollars. And it's like, I really care about what the US government does because they're doing it in my name. And I care a lot because I'm American. And we're the impediment to peace, which is another way of saying, we're responsible for all these innocent people getting dragooned out of public parks in Kiev and sent to go die. Like what? How, that is not good. I'm ashamed of it.